welcome to another episode of Warhammer 40,000. It's Changer Scorpion, it's 2,000 points, and Chris Rainey has returned with his Eldar, a new list for him, and they will be fighting against the might of the Tau Empire. Fighting across this desert terrain here, it's been uh, an Imperial sector that's been bombed out, uh, scrub and terrain and palm trees, uh, but it'll be in this area that the Tau Empire will do battle with the Eldar. Right, welcome to another episode of Warhammer 40,000. It's 2,000 points. Tau Empire versus Eldar. So uh, it's a tweaked Tau list here. Uh, as I develop them further, looking for that final list uh, for the Tau. So it is a brigade uh, detachment being used, and it's battle forged. So 15 command points available for the Tau in this game. So uh, a number of HQs. The first one's the commander, just down here, with four fusion blasters, and then. Uh, a Nefarial just here as well, Fireblade, it's the third HQ, and then the fourth HQ is Longstrike with the Rao Gun, he's just on the right hand side there, and Smart Missile Systems and then two Seeker Missiles for him as well. Then for troops, there's six units of troops, two units of ten breaches just here, and then four units of uh, Strike Team Fire Warriors, uh, units of 10 for each of them. No upgrades for any of those uh, units just there. Then for fast attack you have to take three of them for the brigade. Uh, so one, two, three units of four shield drones there to offer some protection to the tower force. And then uh, for elites there's the ghost kill with the two stealth drones, cyclic iron blaster uh, and or cyclic iron raker for him, two fusion blasters for him as well and then the target lock upgrade so you can move and fire uh, assault and heavy weapons without restriction. Then other elites is the fire sight marksman, there's one, two, three of those in this list just to provide a bit of uh, marker light support for this tower army and then heavy support, a unit of three uh, broadsides armed with the heavy rail rifles uh, double plasma rifles for them as well and each of those is carrying a seeker missile as well and they have the velocity tracker upgrade as well uh, to help them fire at units that can fly and then uh, two hammerheads for uh, heavy support that's the last two slots so hammerhead number two and hammerhead number three uh, each with rail guns, smart missile systems, and each of them carrying two seeker missiles as well. It's the first time I've used three hammerheads in a regular game of 40k. It'd be interesting to see how well they do, how well long strike can direct uh, their firepower against this Eldar force. But we'll take a look now and see what the Eldar have. Right, so Chris Rainey has returned, it's good to see him back, and he's been working on his Eldar here, 2,000 points of them. Uh, some new units that we've not seen him use before, we'll take a look and see what he has. Okay, 2,000 points of Alaytok, Craftworld Eldar. It's two battalions, so I've got 13 command points to spend. Uh, Warlord is an Otark. I've taken him from the old Index setup, so I've been able to give him a Banshee Mask, Power Sword, and an Avenger, sure can catapult for the extra range. I'm taking for his Warlord trait, the LA talk one, the Puritanical Leader, so he gives a fearless bubble within six inches. Second command choice with him is a Warlock who has Protect and Jinx. Then for the three troop options, I've got 15 Guardian Defenders with a Bright Lance and 10 Guardian Defenders with a Bright Lance. Then to keep it fluffy, I've taken seven Rangers. I've taken into the Elites two units of fire dragons, each of them with five. One of them has been upgraded to be the Exart with the fire pike. I also have a third elite, which is the Wraith Guard. That's six man unit there. They're the Ghost Axes and Force Shield. Then I've got two transports at the back, which are the Wave Serpents. One of them has been upgraded to take the Shuriken Cannon and they both have the twin Bright Lance. Both of them have also been upgraded to take the Spirit Stones. The second battalion effectively is made up of the three units of Dire Avengers acting as the troops. Uh, we've got a 10 man unit with an Exart with a Dire Sword and Shuriken Pistol, an 8 man unit, similar Exart, Dire Sword and Shuriken Pistol, and a 10 man unit with an Exart, he has the Power Glaive and Shimmer Shield. And the two headquarters for that are a Far Seer and a Spirit Seer. The Spirit Seer is Quicken and Restrain, and the Far Seer have given Fortune and Executioner. And then I put a heavy choice in there with them, and that's a Fire Prism. The only upgrade it has is the Shuriken Cannon. All right, so that's Chris's list. 
here, uh, it's some nice new units he's been working on. Definitely have my eyes on this unit here, it's a unit that I like as well and hope to use them in my new Eldar list, but six of those Wraith Guard there, be interesting to see how well they do. Uh, so we need Warlord Traits and Fruit Boldness Victory here, uh, so if I get to within 12 inches of an enemy target it's reroll to hits, uh, and then the Pure Tide Engram Neurochip, giving it to the Fireblade as a single reroll for him. Uh, or another unit within six inches and also whenever we use a stratagem or the opponent uses a stratagem on a six we get a command point back and then chris you're running uh puritanical on him on the other, so it ignores morale, morale six inches. yes and then uh, the relic uh shard of an aris so an upgraded power sword effect upgraded power sword okay so uh, relic and trait are on the wall or just there okay so we'll go into scenario now and deployment So uh, the scenario is sealed orders. Uh, Slay the Warlord, First Blood and Line Breaker are all available. Tactical objectives. This mission uses tactical objectives. At the start of each of uh, the player's first turn, they generate six. So both of us here are going to get six tactical objectives. If at the start of a player's subsequent turn they have no tactical objectives remaining, they must generate new tactical objectives. The first time a player runs out of tactical objectives, they generate five new ones. The second time they run out, they generate four and so on. So uh, it's gradually the number of tactical objectives is reduced uh, each time they work their way through a batch of cards. There is the stratagem here that we can use. Uh, it's only one command point, except all losses. Uh, use the stratagem at the end of your turn to discard up to three active tactical objectives. So you can dump a whole load of them if you need to. Uh, but lots of tactical objectives here in this game, so I reckon uh, it should be quite a high points scoring game. So uh, this is a mission that uses secret orders here, so we'll be keeping our objectives secret from each other. That'll make it interesting here uh, for both players, not knowing what each of them, each player is going for. Uh, for purposes of filming here, it'd be a nightmare for us to try and uh, cover what the objectives are uh, secretly for both sides and to be fair. So we'll just play the game and uh, reveal these objectives as they are fulfilled. So... That's the scenario here. We've never played this one before. Sealed orders. It looks interesting. we will go on to deployment now. We'll start alternating placing models on the table. All right, so the battle mat that we're using in this game is by gamemat.eu. Uh, they produce these battle mats perfect for games of Warhammer 40,000. Uh, Sands of Time, this one's called. It's 6x4 in size. Uh, it's so perfect for games of 40k. Uh, and it simply rolls out nice and flat. You've got your nice design. Uh, it's the mouse mat material. So... Uh, nice and soft, figure friendly, nice and quiet for rolling dice and then we simply place the train on top uh, and then some, uh, some stones and scatter palm trees and so on and then that all blends that in nicely. Nice mat this one here so you can check them out, that's gamemat.eu They also produce uh, terrain sets as well, the terrain that we're using in this game, this industrial set that we're using uh, is from them as well uh, so you can check out gamemat.eu, they do a whole range of mats and terrain sets now that are available from them you can use it in 40k and also other gaming systems as well. Alright so deployment done here for both sides, uh, Tau have deployed uh, right the way across their deployment zone here. So a thicker gun line on this right hand side, two ranks deep of strike teams. So one, two, and three units. Uh, there's a fire sight marks from just here. Unit of drones hiding behind this generator. They're going to offer some protection to the broadsides. One, two, three of them. And another unit of drones just here as well uh, to protect these broadsides. Uh, and then inside here, uh, the fire blades just there. And also the ethereal as well, just granting the six inch bubble from both of those to those units. Unit Fire Warriors just here in the middle. Fire Sight Marksman here, and one of them's climbed all the way up to the top of this observation area, <laughs> just there, looking out across the table. Breaches just there, ready to move out. Going to try and use those a bit more aggressively. Breaches here on the left hand side. The commanders behind them. The Ghost Kill and Drones have deployed just here on the extreme left. And then the Hammerheads, uh, Hammerhead number three, two, and then long strike right here behind the cover. So that's the deployment done for the tower. Uh, we'll have a look now and see what the Eldar deployment is. All right, so Eldar have deployed uh, up to their line as well. It's interesting, I wonder how aggressive Chris will play this. I think he will have to go after the tower, but we'll see. It's got a mixture of assault units and uh, shooting units as well. So it may well be a fire in advance and then close in for the kill. Uh, here is the plan. Snipers have deployed here, just inside this crater. Uh, then Guardians here sitting on objective number three, Fire Prism just here, and then inside this Wave Serpent is the two units of Fire Dragons, 
and the spirit seal with them as well so that's the golden nugget there for the tower to try and crack <laughs> if they can uh, there's a farseer just here and then uh, dire avengers one and two units one of the units has gone into the webway uh, so they'll be turning up turn one onwards we're going to play the usual rules now uh big faq so uh, turn one within chris's deployment zone uh, turn two onwards anywhere he wants as long as they're more than nine inches away from the opponent's models uh big unit of guardians here in amongst them is the autark and then here inside this wave serpent is the wraith guard or wraith blades uh, with their axes and shields yeah, so that's deployment done. Uh, just to mention for the tower, actually, unit of drones has gone into Manta Strikes. They're available to turn up uh, at some point in the game just to offer a bit of drone support somewhere on the board. So that's deployment done for both sides. What's crucial now is who gets to go for first. Uh, but having said that, I think both sides potentially could absorb a turn one tower, plenty of uh, resources available. Eldar here, the entire army, is minus one to hit. Uh, at over 12 inches away that will help the Eldar for sure Tau usual ballistic skill is 4 plus that's going to drop to a 5 plus here at trying to hit these Eldar but without further ado we will uh, roll off I'm going to roll this Tau dice here my Tau dice united with the Tau and then Chris gets plus 1 for uh, having finished deploying first so we'll not wait for the other here we'll roll oh dear there's a dice that's teetering here on a on a six uh we'll just let chris roll up see yeah <laughs> he's rolled a six as well yeah, right cock dice or not it doesn't matter the elder will go first we'll now try and seize the initiative we'll roll a nice flat area here we rolled, oh we rolled a five <laughs> close chris is happy with that that's nice so uh, eldar get to go first which is good uh, they can make their first move against the tower gun light we're going to turn one now eldar will strike first All right, so Chris on the move here. He is going aggressive with the Eldar, having taken turn one. He's going to use that now to his advantage and move up as quick as possible. So uh, peerless agility, it's called, to advance them. Uh, how does that work? An extra it's a guaranteed six inches. Okay, yeah, nice and quick from the Dire Avengers. Wave Serpent's moving up. So remember, there's the uh, two units of Fire Dragons and the Spirits here inside that one. Closing in the range nicely just there. Fire Prism's moved across. Dire Avengers have moved behind uh, here along with the Farseer. Rangers haven't moved. They're nicely in range. And they'll be granted an extra bit of cover inside that crater. The Guardians are going to remain stationary just here. We'll cover the objective numbers in just a moment. Warlock, uh, Altark and 
Guardian's moving up, and then the Wave Serpent moving across here. So it's an all-out assault here from the Eldar. Aggressive play from them as they try to assault this Tau gun line. Objectives, just to clarify here, objective number one, two. Uh, objective number three is just here, being held by the Guardians. Objective number four, objective number five, and then objective number six is currently being held by the Breachers, just there. Chris has drawn six tactical objectives. Uh, those will be kept secret. He'll reveal them uh, as he fulfills them. So this will make the game interesting to watch here. Yeah, trying to, uh, You can all try and predict as to what objectives each of us are going after here. Uh, but importantly for the game, uh, we're keeping our objectives secret from each other as well. So secret missions going on here for both sides. But six cards have been drawn. There's plenty of options here. So expect some uh, objectives to be fulfilled quite quickly and the points to start pouring in <laughs> here for both armies here. We'll let Chris... Make the rest of his moves unless you've finished. Yeah, psychics. Psychic phase ready. All right, we're going to psychic phase next. Okay, so psychic phase done. Uh, pretty swift here. So protect uh, cast on the uh, Dire Avengers just here. So a three up save for them. And a four up invun, thanks to the Shimmer Shield. And then across here, uh, the Fire Prism has received Fortune. So five plus uh, ignoring wounds that come through. Just a little bit of protection being dished out here by the psychers, anticipating retaliation from the Tau uh, on their first turn. Okay, so psychic phase finished. We're going to shooting phase next here as the Eldar try and soften up the Tau as much as they can. All right, so shooting phase here and the crafty and cunning Eldar up to their usual tricks. The snipers here are going to try and pick on uh, the Fireblade. Chris. Was well, going to go after the ethereal, but we're just ca just catching three inches here. Savior protocols could help him out. But if, uh, the fire blade is not, he will not be helped. He's can be picked out here. Threes for hits, five hits. Uh, strength fours with threes to wound. Threes to wound. The, uh -huh. mortal. It's a mortal and three save throws. Very so good. Four save throws, but you've already took a mortal wound on top of that. Yes. Okay. So a little. The wounds coming through here. We've passed two, so we've taken three wounds in total here on the Fireblade. Right, handy enough for those snipers. That's a good play there. Three wounds taken on the Fireblade. He has two left, so he better watch himself. He needs to hang around with some drones, otherwise he could well be finished off uh, by those snipers uh, on later turns. So good firepower for coming from them. Helpful to root out characters from a gun line with those snipers. What's next on the menu here for the Eldar. Bright lance into one of your... Right, Chris is going off to one of these. He is aware that the drones are nearby, but it has to be done. Four. Uh, strength four, that'll be enough. All right, so uh, that was firepower coming in from this bright lance here. Uh, Chris uh, has rolled there, he's got his hit and got his wound. So we will... Uh, save your protocols here with the drones. We'll use drones from this unit here. So two plus, roll a six. Uh, and then, because it's a shield drone, there's some mortal wound dealt out, five plus to keep it alive for being a shield drone. No, so a drone has been expended to protect the broadsides. The bright lance hit being absorbed there by a drone. Yeah, Chris just rolled there the damage. It would have been five wounds coming through against these. So the drones, small but helpful for sure here, neutralising the potentially deadly effect there of the Bright Lance. Alright, so, uh, we, we're on shooting now with this Wave Serpent here. The shield's been fired. Chris rolled a 1 for that one, so it's not done any damage. Uh, the Shuriken Catapults caused two wounds across here, and we saved both. But now the two Bright Lance shots at minus 1 to hit is going after Hammerhead number 3. In fours. fours. One. It's got a hit to come through. We have 3 for a wound. Toughness 7. Yeah. Two. Does he want to reroll? Okay. So three plus. It does. He gets his wound. He'd be happy with that. Uh, an engram near a chip. We don't roll a six. And path of command for Chris. No. No. Okay. So no cover for us. And uh, cover, by the way, we're playing standard rules for cover. So uh, it has to, for vehicles, they've got to be in the cover and obscured by it. Uh, so this hammerhead does not get cover. So it's the armor, go, it goes straight through, and you can roll d6 damage. 
Five. She rolls a five. Chris will be happy with that. Five wounds come through against the Hamid. But it has 13 wounds, though. <laughs> so it's got eight left. Right, so uh, Chris spreading fire here. The shield's going to deactivate and go into the breaches. That's the closest unit. Uh, the shooting cannon on this one's going to go after those drones and double bright lance shot into Hamid number three as Chris tries to break one of these hammerheads here. So. I'll start with the lances. It's an important one. Okay, two shots here. Fours again. Fours, yes, because he moved. <sighs> No. Oh dear, it's not so good dice rolling here at the moment. Oh, it's painful. I know your pain because <laughs> I've <laughs> gone through this plenty of times before. Three cannon, now I do have minus one because you're stealth generator. Yes, that's uh, fours. Two hits. Two hits. Strength six. Strength six. Yeah, they both wound. Okay. So uh, four plus invent saves. Should we pass one? Um. Yeah, oh no, we don't have in saves. It's normal save of four plus, but um, there's no minuses there anyway. And uh, come on, reroll. Yeah, we'll, we'll go for it. Okay, so four plus. Yeah, we keep it alive. Six plus with a neuro chip. That's a one. So no, and uh, can't use it. Okay. So three wins, mortal wounds. Okay, so Chris rolling up for his shield at the moment here. So we protected that drone. Uh, they've kept both of those alive. Uh, it's cost us a command point, but I think it was worth keeping those stealth drones alive and two mortal wounds uh, Chris has rolled up here on the breaches so two casualties we'll mark them up uh, for morale as well yeah okay so breaches being hit here this is firepower coming in from the dire avengers uh, so a load of hits 14 three is the wound oh some sixes in there this is pretty good Two, two kills. Do they no, no, they don't have any protection from the drone there, so... Three, four, five, six saves. Six saves. This is pretty good firepower here from the Eldar. Four up armor save here to protect some of these. Yeah, we saved uh, four of them. So uh, two casualties plus two. So another four breaches brought down. The squad's in trouble. All right, Bright Lance here. This is uh, the gun platform uh, support coming in from the Guardians. Uh, Chris going after him at number three here. Path of command. Yeah, yeah, he's rolled a, a one, but he can re-roll. Six. Six, nice plum hit. Threes for a wound. Yeah. Oh, he does get his wound. There's nothing we can do about it, so it's D6 damage. One. <laughs> oh, he's rolled a one. <laughs> Okay, so we drop to seven. Hammerhead's able to absorb a fair bit of damage uh, with that 13 wounds they start on. So uh, absorbing the damage pretty good. Seven wounds remains on Hammerhead number three. So uh, Chris firing the fire prism now. He's going after this unit of fire warriors on this flank and trying to reduce them. He's just missed the shuriken cannon and then dispersed shooting now coming through from the fire prism's gun. Five and three, eight. Okay, so you're firing twice. Okay. So eight shots in total. Eight fours because moved. Moved, okay. Not great. So yes, three hits have come through with toughness three. Twos. Twos to wind. Uh, toast. And minus. Ooh, I want to say minus three. Yeah, so minus three. So these are instantly vaporized here. So those tower warriors can be removed. And be a morale check for them as well. So is that shooting phase? Yes. Anything else? No. Nope. Okay. And then I don't think there's going to be any assaults unless you want to charge the wave serpents. Maybe. That's possibly what we'll do. Okay. All right. So shooting phase finished. We'll let Chris uh, make some decisions here uh, if he wants to assault anywhere along the line. Okay. So assaults or one assault would take place here. The wave serpent going into the breaches. Uh, it's a seven inch charge. Uh, Chris is probably going to make it in on a double six. Yeah, he will. All right. So resolve some overwatch here. Might better pick off a few wounds here with the breaches and some supporting fire as well, potentially coming in from the fire warriors. All right. So uh, 12 inches. Chris has actually swung around here uh, into the breaches and then on the pilot phase, uh, he will but we've just positioned the model there, but he'll push into contact with those uh, fire warriors there as well, just to try and negate their firepower next turn. So uh, it was a desperate move here from the Wave Serpent, but uh, an extreme move for sure. Uh, so we'll resolve these combats, not expecting to do too much damage here uh, for either side. Right, so uh, combat's resolved here. Uh, two wounds were taken from Overwatch, by the way. Uh, a wound from each of these squads, as Chris uh, flew in and then another one's been causing close combat as well and chris did no damage against the breaches just there but he's maneuvered himself into the heart of this tower gun line uh, with some uh, stylish display uh, here of maneuvering from uh, this wave serpent pilot 
Okay, so that's the end of the turn. Uh, Elder have manoeuvred. Uh, has been the main aim for them uh, in this game. Remember, there's two uh, decent payloads here. Wraith Blades inside here uh, with the axes. You know, six of them uh, ready to pounce. And then across here, a uh, double unit of Fire Dragons as well. That's, this is going to be the focus for the tower. These two transports and their contents. The tower will be focusing on them on their next turn. So... Uh, roll up some morale here for the tower. Uh, they have some morale uh, results to roll up. All right, so uh, morale's been resolved here. The breaches, we did an auto pass with them and didn't roll uh, a six for the pure tide engram neurochip. And across here, we passed uh, with this fire warrior squad. Uh, and then the drone here as well. We're losing one drone, we were there, fine there for morale as well. But that is uh, morale resolved and the end of the turn. Chris has traded in uh, holding objective number five. So one point has been picked up. The other five objectives as yet unfulfilled. Uh, so that is the end of the turn. We'll go on to turn one now for the tower. They can strike back here. I think the mission is quite clear for them. Yes, they'll have their secret objectives to fulfill, but there is an immediate threat here of these two wave serpents and their cargo needs to be dealt with. We'll go on to the first turn for the tower. Empire next. Right, so tower turn one movement is complete. The gun line has advanced here under orders from the fire blade, angered by the wounds taken <laughs> from the snipers. He's given the order to advance here. He's lost patience with the elder and has asked his line to advance. So uh, one, two, three units of fire warriors moving ahead. Uh, the ethereal and the fire blade just behind. Drones moving up this time to offer some protection. And then uh, the broadsides remaining exactly where they are. This unit of drones remaining stationary as well. Firesight marksmen holding position. Fire warriors have fallen back. Uh, there's not much they can do, but they fanned out here to uh, make a line of bodies along here and into the jungle. Breaches have fallen back uh, and have done the same. And then swinging right to this unit of breaches, they can fire and they've moved across uh, towards the uh, wave serpent just there. Marksman here and here remain stationary. And then the hammerheads. Uh, long strike has moved from here across in between the two hammerheads. We used automated repair system and uh, rolled uh, three wounds back, just back on ten. And we also rolled for our pure tide engram new chip and got an extra command point back for that. So we're down to eleven uh, command points left now for the tower. Uh, drones and the breacher have moved, or the um, Ghost Kill have moved across to lend fire support here. The tower is going to really focus on this Wave Serpent and its contents. That's priority number one. Priority number two across here. And then all else, including objectives, is secondary here for the tower. If we've been forced into this situation, the tower will respond here to this Eldar assault. So uh, we'll go on to there's no psychic phase. We'll go straight into shooting phase next for the tower on their first turn. Okay, so uh, shooting phase then. We've done some Markolite shots here just to prepare the way for the tower firepower to come through. One Markolite hit coming up here from uh, the fire blade, so one hit just on there. Then across here, uh, this one and this one here, the two marks were missed. But this one firing across got his hit, and then we played uplinked Markolite and rolled a five, so an extra three Markolites. So four Markolite hits in total here on this wave serpent. Uh, just there. So tower making use of their stratagems. Uh, we rolled a six as well for our neurochip, so we're on down to ten now for our command points still available. We'll go on shooting next. Tradition has it that we start with long strike, so we'll fire him first of all. Okay, so Chris says weather the storm here. It'd be a miracle here if this wave serpent can survive the tower. Plenty of options. Long strike firing then three plus two plus for a hit here against the wave serpent. So we do get our hit. Uh, twos for a wound with long strike here. We do get the two. So there's there's no kind of say the shield's been expended. All right, so uh, it's just going to be d6 damage. There's no mortal wounds coming through, and we kick off with five being knocked down. Ah, yes, there is some protection here. Spirit stones to try and alleviate some of this damage. Chris does roll a six, so four wounds taken down to nine. So. Uh, that's the rail gun. There's a lot of uh, plus ones, minus ones going on here. So, uh, firing across at the wave serpent, it was twos to hit. Uh, the Latok advantage not there. We are within 12. So, he starts on a two plus to hit. He moved minus one, and then he's plus one to hit for fire cast exemplar. So, twos to hit. And across here, we're firing the smart missile systems. Uh, Chris will get his Latok bonus. So, they'll be on threes to hit here with these shots coming through. So, there are some misses. 
threes to wound, and there'd be no minuses at all. So uh, Chris is on a three plus save, thanks to Protect. And pass the ball. Uh, the Seeker missiles as well to fire uh, from Long Strike into the Wave Serpent as well. Uh, so twos to hit with them. Just going to use these up at this stage. Uh, two hits. Twos to wound. Strength eight, toughness seven, and plus one to wound. So one fails. We've used our reroll. Uh, this is minus two. So Chris will get a five up save here. No. And then d6 damage. It's a five again. Uh, Chris can roll sixes. Spirit stones. No, it's so five wounds taken. Down to five wounds left here on this wave serpent. It's been severely hurt here by a long strike. All right, so uh, long strike leading by example. Here we go to hammerhead number two. Uh, so uh, the rail gun, both seeker missiles will go into the wave serpent, and then uh, we'll fire across again with these smart missile systems against the uh, dire avengers. So do dire avengers first of all. We haven't moved, but it is minus one. That was a one. It's a miss. Okay, and then wounds are three plus. So just two, two saves are three plus. There for Chris, and it's fouled one. All right, so one Dire Avenger brought down. So uh, two plus then to hit with uh, the Railgun. Now oh, we've rolled a one. Two Seeker Missiles. Two hits here, uh, and then threes to wound. Two wounds do come through. Two saves of five plus. Here for the Wave Serpent. No. 2d6 damage. It's six. If Chris needs to roll, two sixes at least. Yeah, stay alive. Ooh, no. No. <laughs> it's just enough there. Five wounds come through. Chris would like it to blow up here. He was saying he'd like it to. No, all right, so it's a nice, neat job there from the tower. <laughs> They've cut through this wave serpent here. It's Flaming Hulk comes crashing down, and the Reef Guard prepare to emerge. All right, so we're on stage two now. Uh, the transport's been dealt with, but now a tougher target for sure to deal with. It's the Reef uh, Blades here, armed with those axes and shields. We'll see if we can uh, reduce them down. The Tau have plenty of firepower left, so we'll start this process here of trying to reduce this unit down as much as possible. All right, so Chris has instantly played lightning fast reflexes. <laughs> on these as they try to uh, deflect the shots coming through. Commander's going to fire. Uh, we can reroll our hits because we're in 12 inches. So we'd be on twos to hit minus one for lightning fast reflexes, threes to hit. They all hit on a triple six and a three. Uh, threes to wound though. Two of them foul. So Chris has invon saves here. Uh, four plus with the shields. Try and block these. Mm, one's got through has blocked another so just one getting through there because of our range it's 2d6 discard the lowest so we'll choose the six and one of the wraith guard has been wraith blades has been vaporized just there. there's five of them left they are tough to deal with here we'll offload now with the ghost kill all of his weapons will go into that squad as well so two fusion blaster shots needing fives for him do get a hit threes for a wound Yes, it teetered on a one, but it's gone to a four. No, uh, we'll just check the range. If that's nine inches, we can, I think it is, we can roll uh, 2d6 discard the lowest. Nine inches, okay. So we'll choose the five. So another one brought down here. Just trying to reduce the combat potential of this unit. We know potentially how nasty it can be. Um, so now there's four of them left. Okay. Fire the raker next. Needing fives. We do get a wound come through. Yeah, uh, minus one. So four up. No, I didn't declare it there, so it's just a regular fire pass. So it's going to be a wound coming through uh, there from the ghost kill. All right, so uh, continuing on with the shooting here. We're going to fire these. We're going to off offload all that they have. Plasma rifles here, the iron rapid fire. Uh, of the Wave Serpent, and also the Heavy Air Rifles as well. Going to fire all of them with everything they have except the Seeker Missiles into this Wave Serpent. Going to try and bring it down uh, here. Something for the Fire Warriors potentially to shoot at if we can uh, force the Fire Dragons to disembark. We'll see. So, firing them, declaring all of them. So, we'll fire six uh, Heavy Air Rifle shots. 
Uh, we are within 12 here, so uh, it's regular force to hit, and then re-rolling ones, thanks to the ferrule and also the mark light hit coming through. So fours, absolutely diabolical. And there is a one here, yeah. Oh, that's a dreadful round of shooting. Uh, actually, that one's a hit, thanks to velocity tracker on those. Yes, plus one to hit targets that can fly. So two hits come through. Uh, three's to wound. Double six. That's mortal wounds, actually. Two mortal wounds come through. Uh, and then minus four. The so Chris is going to try and ignore those mortal wounds here with sixes for his spirit stones. No, okay. And then uh, minus four. No protection. The shield's gone. Okay, so it's a straight 2d6 damage. Five. So five wounds. You can try and block some of these as well with sixes. Also, which you're also two. All right, so five wounds caused in total there uh, from the heavy route rifles. We're going to fight the plasma, which is within rapid fire, within range 12. So fours. That's better. Does your velocity tracker work on the plasma? Oh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so they've all hit some contrast there. Fives for wounds, though, which is not as good. It's minus three. So saves of six plus followed by sixes. So no, and then you can reroll those. This is for the spirit stones. There's one. All right. So two wounds, of course, down to six. We haven't cracked open the transport here. So six wounds left. All right. So uh, struggling there. Six wounds left. We do have Hammerhead number three, the new addition to the army. He's here, and uh, firing from one point of the vehicle to the other. We can see through to this wave serpent here. So we're going to fire and try and bring him down. So, a two for a hit. Uh, no, it's minus one because of the LATOC, but it's a four as a hit anyway. And then uh, threes for a wound. Oh, we rolled a one. Uh, two Seeker missiles. This is the last of the Seeker missiles uh, for the Hammerheads, and we have missed with both. So all missiles have been fired now by the Hammerheads. And then Seeker, or Smart Missile Systems, going against those Dire Avengers. Needing... Threes. Yes, because of a late talk. Threes to wound. Two wounds come through. Three up saves available. One casualty. Okay, so it's down to the fire warriors now. We've played focused fire. It's three command points. Didn't recover uh, one of those command points there with the neuro chip. Uh, but we're on plus one to wounds. It means that our pulse rifles will wound on a four plus here against this vehicle. Now, 30 shots coming in. <laughs> from this middle unit, 10 of them firing rapid fire, and then the fire blades help as well. We'll just check the rules for the fire blade. It's models, models from units within six. So uh, not all of these are gonna get this volley fire bonus, but the central unit, all of those models are within six of the fire blade. Uh, Rerolling ones and fours to hit. So it's a lovely sound that <laughs> all the dice <laughs> run. So to make it. <laughs> Yeah, there's Chris's tears as well. The tears of Isha begin falling. So I'm just going to take these ones and re-roll them. Okay, so a, a good number of hits here. Yep, so now fours to wound. We'll see if this focused fire helps. Yep, there is a good number of saves to make here. Infantry don't usually cause this kind of trouble for vehicles. Nine saves to make here at three plus to save. So two get through and six is to try and block here. No, nope. all right, so six drops to four. At this rate, we will struggle to bring this uh, flyer down, but we'll see. Well, this hover tank will go on to the next unit. Uh, these are wholly within, uh, but there's less of them. They have already taken casualties. There's seven of those. that will be 21 shots. 21 shots, and again, re-rolling ones. And it's needing fours. So these are the wounds coming through. Needing fours to wound. Not so good. I think Chris should be safe here. So there's three saves to make. Unless it's a, 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 a dire roll coming through. Oh, triple six. No, it's okay. So ignores that round of fire. Pad. The amount of pulse rifle rounds bouncing off uh, this tank here as it begins to billow with smoke here. Four wounds remaining. One unit of fire warriors left to fire at it. Uh, so 23 shots with these, uh, unit of 10, rapid fires, 20 shots, and then three, three of them are within range of the fire blade. So just re-rolling our ones here. So there's five of them. 
Yeah, some more hits coming through. Okay, so a good number of hits. Uh, so then, fours for wounds. So Chris could be in trouble here again. Depends on how well he rolls. He's got seven saves to make here, three plus. So he could be brought down if he rolls badly enough. Should be okay. Oh wow, oh, passed there with all of them. Zero wounds taken. The Wave Seven, one of the best transports in the game, holds here. It has not been destroyed. So uh, that's the saves made there. Well done. Uh, Chris has passed all of those, and so. Four wounds remain, uh, the tank billowing smoke here, but still alive, one of the best transports in the game, uh, has kept its occupants alive. So the two units of fire dragons there, safe enough. Chris, be, Chris will be able to use those how he pleases on his next turn. There's nothing else we can fire at that thing. No. All right, so a little bit of firepower left. Uh, the breach is down here uh, to fire at the wraith blades. All right, so uh, last of the shooting done, it was the breaches down here firing through. Number of wounds caused, but Chris rolling well. No further damage taken. So there's four of those uh, left just there. So uh, firepower finished, the breaches firing through, caused some wounds, but Chris rolling up some saves uh, there on the Wraith Blades. So the turn, well, the shooting phase is finished. Assaults, quite possibly, yes. We'll see what the options are here for the tower. We'll go on to assaults and overwatch next. Alright, so yes, some assaults have taken place. We had to come on reroll here, rolled badly, and the crater with the minus two on the charge, but we made it in with this unit of fire warriors. Uh, no damage from Overwatch taken uh, just there, so I've made it in against that wave serpent. And then across here, the breaches have charged in. Uh, hoping to keep a couple of those alive just to cut Chris's options down. If we charge and he pulls out of the combat, uh, he'll not be able to charge another target. It's the Reef Guard that get the implacable rule, uh, but for these. Uh, they'll have to pull back and not charge, or uh, they can continue on in the fight. Or if they wipe out the breaches here, then Chris will be free to move off. So breaches here being sent in, perhaps confused. Why are we being asked to charge into Wraith Blades? But it's all for the greater good, of course. Here <laughs> in the Fire Warrior is the same, perhaps questioning uh, why they should be charging into the Wave Serpent. But again, it's for the greater good. So uh, we'll go on to combat resolution next. Not expecting too much damage to be done from a tower perspective. We'll see how many of the breaches Chris can hack down uh, with the Wraith Blades. All right, so combat's resolved here. Uh, one wound caused here by the Fire Warriors, so three wounds left from the Wave Serpent, no damage in return. And across here, we did cause a wound here on the Wraith Blades, so another wound taken. One of them's got two wounds taken. Uh, and then Chris hacked down three of the Breaches, and then we fouled morale. Uh, another uh, model fled. So, uh, but Breaches, they're still there, so that's their mission accomplished for them. So that is the end of the turn. What we'll do now is we'll trade in some uh, completed objectives now for the town. All right, so the Tau uh, have achieved none, none of their cards here. There's ones that we can achieve, but not, not at this stage. Uh, so zero points to hand in. We have picked up first blood, so it's one each here at this stage here. So we'll go on to turn two now for the Eldar. I Personally, I think they've come off a lot more lightly than I thought. I, I really seriously thought we would wipe out the tank and the occupants here and at least destroy the transport. The Tau firepower has been heavy. But has it been heavy enough? There's still plenty of fight left in this Eldar force. Uh, Chris has the two units of fire dragons available here. Wraith blades, they've been damaged, but they can still fight. And the rest of his force pretty much intact and ready to take the fight to the tower. We'll go on to the second turn now for the Eldar.
Chris are in the middle of movement phase here at the moment for the Eldar. Uh, again, Chris is going aggressive uh, here with his force, so he's deciding what to do with the Wave Serpent here. I think he's going to disembark here with some of his Fire Dragons. Dire Avengers have moved up. You can see they've swung around behind. Guardians have conga lined along, uh, keeping the gun platform stationary. And then the Farseer has moved up as well. Okay. It's gonna, <laughs> I think he's going to go after oh, the board sides here. Disembark three. And then move. Yes, three inches and then a move. Yes, correct. Yeah, so, whoa. Well, have been flanked here by the Fire Dragons. Uh, Dire Avengers moving ahead here. Guardians moving up as well. And again, Conga lining, keeping the gun platform stationary as well. All right, so uh, movement's complete here. Uh, so Fire Prisms remain stationary. Hasn't yeah. moved yet. Yeah. Okay, so he'll fire at normal ballistic skill. Uh, pulling out a combat here. Eight inches available uh, with the three wounds left on the Wave Serpent just here. Scouts have remained where they are as well. And then Chris disembarked uh, the other unit of Fire Dragons and also the Spirits here as well. So there's ten of them there uh, now. And the Spirits here also. So uh, we've seen these advancing up and then Chris has elected to remain in combat here with the Wraith Blades fighting away against the Breachers. That's uh, movement phase finished. Uh, so we're not drawing fresh cards. We're waiting till you, we complete our full batch of cards until we're able to draw uh, the next batch, which will be five cards. Remember, there is that stratagem to use. Either of us can use it to, to pay a command point to drop up to three cards in one go uh, if we want to freshen up what objectives we have available. We'll go on to Psychic Phase next for the Elder on the second turn. Okay, Psychic Phase done then. Uh, the Warlock here failed to protect the Wraith Guard, protect power. Uh, Executioner from the Farseer failed to go off against the Fire Warriors here. Uh, but the extra move uh, that you can make Quicken. Quicken went off here, so the uh, Fire Dragons moved. And then Fortune, yes, cast on uh, the Fire Prism as well, just giving that 5 plus ignoring wounds that come through. So, uh, not too bad a Psychic Phase there. We're going to Shooting Phase next for the Eldar. I think they have an advantage here on this flank. They're poised to strike quite hard against the tower. This is turning into a, uh, a battle of its own right. It looks like the game has been split into two parts. Battle number one is here. I think the Eldar have the advantage, although there's some pretty strong tower units. And on this side, uh, Eldar really struggling. Uh, tower dominating in this sector for sure. But we'll go on shooting phase next to so we'll see what kind of damage the Eldar can do. All right, so a lance shot coming from the Guardians here. There's the gun platform and it's going after the damaged hammerhead, hammerhead number three. Two. Okay, <laughs> I just missed that shot. Um, and it was re rolling ones as well as available. You can see the Eldar just in the middle of that Guardian unit. And now Chris will be firing nine shots or 18. Uh, there in total, coming in against the Fire Warriors just here. They're 12 inch weapons now in range. Oh, yes, we're rolling ones. There's some very reliable firepower coming through. God, that's a lot of hits. Yeah, Tower Infantry in trouble. Tower in, tr in trouble here on this flank. Uh, they're being attacked from all sides here. A lot of firepower available for the Elder. Threes for wounds, sixes are good. Okay, there's a good number of sixes in there and plenty of wounds. Six saves to make here. Foul three, foul four, and then there's uh, six shuriken, or three shuriken hits, so seven casualties in total from this unit. They have been hit very hard indeed. Okay, so uh, most of these are going to be firing through here at these. Uh, one of the Dire Avengers and a plasma grenade are going to be thrown into the Fire Warriors. So, plasma number of shots, five. five. Three, four, five three. Two hits, strength. Three or more to win, minus one. Yep. Oh wow, it's minus one, isn't it? So, three saves of five plus. Guy almost wiped out the squad with a plasma grenade there. Uh, <laughs> so, he's one Avenger who's shooting at them. Yep, two shots. One hit, here comes the wound. No, oh, no. <laughs> so, nine casualties taken. Okay. So 12 shots coming through to here. That's definitely tipped. I can reroll one for the Otark. Okay, maybe three to wound. Infantry fire pack may, may be quite short range for the Eldar, but it is it's decent enough. So three wounds to save here, no cover. 
four plus, fouled two, and then a shuriken there as well. So three casualties taken. I'll take them off of the end just here. But Tau Fire Warrior has been brought down rapidly here. Uh, Autark's firing now, trying to pick off the lone Fire Warrior here. Two wounds. Two wounds. Okay. Two saves of four plus. I think Chris is going to do it. Yes, two and a one. So he's gone. Fire Warrior unit destroyed here. Tau Infantry uh, suffering here at the hands of the Eldar. Right, uh, Wave Serpent's firing here, uh, struggling for hits, but three casualties caused. Shuriken Catapults caused one, and then uh, Chris played the stratagem to overload the uh, shield, activating it again. Two mortal wounds coming through. Three casualties here. He's just rolled two shots and got a six for a hit to the Bright Lance against the damaged Hammerhead number three. So now he's going to roll to wound. Yep. Does get his wound. No saves at all. It's minus four, so it's a straight D6 damage here. He rolls a four. Not bad. Four wounds taken here, so down to six wounds left on Hammerhead number three. Okay, uh, Dire Avengers, the whole lot going into these Fire Warriors just here. Threes for hits. And threes for wounds. It's a reliable type of firepower coming through here. But not so good. One of them brought down for sure. Oh, a six up save for cover. Three foul and then three saves here at three plus. Oh, we found number two, so three more casualties taken. Uh, Guardians fired through here, uh, one wound which we passed. Our armor save. Now it's a bright lance shot. Nice oh, rolled a two, so he's missed. That shot was coming through against one of the broadsides. So town infantry here uh, being decimated, but this core of firepower still remains. I'll we'll see where Chris decides to go. He's got the fire prism still available, and then also these snipers as well. Many wounds make your fire again. Okay, fire blades being shot at again here by the snipers. Seven shots, needing threes. It's not bad. Unit of seven's pretty good. Not too small, uh, not too big, just, just right. Three standard wounds. Three standard saves, okay. Now, do we. Put drones on these to keep them alive. He, yeah, we'll go for drones. So four pluses, normal save. So two drones gone, and then we'll try and ignore the damage here on five pluses. No, oh, ouch! Drones expended here, trying to keep the fire blade alive. Okay, so fire blades kept alive. We've lost a couple of drones. Uh, so now Chris going on to the heavier firepower here, pistol fired here as well, no uh, hit from the spirits here. So you're going to declare this unit here firing yep. first. It's going to go into into these. Yes, there's drone protection around, but Chris is going to fire anyway here. So he can re reroll. Yeah. Okay. Four guys. Okay, not bad. Three hits coming through. Uh, beyond, he rolled to wound these, so threes to wound. Two wounds get through. So we'll save your protocols. I think we'll go from this unit here, first of all. So two plus. Yes, uh, it's a mortal wound. Five plus to stay alive. No, all right, so that's that drone gone. So he absorbs one of the hits, and then we'll go to the other unit to absorb the other. Uh, two plus. No, we've rolled a one. Uh, we'll just maybe just hold it right there. <laughs> maybe. Come on, come on, reroll. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, come on, reroll here. So, uh, two plus. Still fouled. Chris is in here. Pure tide, yeah. We'll just roll that and get a six. Nope. And then it's D6 damage. Three. three. Three wounds come through against one of the broadsides. It's taken damage. Yeah, it's three wounds here. They've uh, managed to find a. A chink in the armor and have broken through against the drones. So now the next unit going after them as well. Interesting. Threes for hits. That's good. Threes for wounds. Oh, you might go for a five hits. Yeah, well. well see. Right, okay. Neuro chip. That's a one. And then uh, path of command. Yeah, so path of command, they get up back. Nope. No, nope. and then a free plus for hit. Oh, oh was missed. Okay. Up. So uh, Chris has five command points available. Uh, Tower on six at the moment. So now he's trying to roll, roll to wound. Ah, oh, no, oh. three twos. Just the one. Uh, we will go for a drone. 
and roll a one again, you're in. This is it. Oh, it's two dice, but I asked at that range. I think he's going to do it. You've done it. He's, yeah, we picked the five. We've lost one. Drones have failed to protect the broadsides here. I thought it was a waste of time. Why would you fire at them? But through rolling plenty of ones, uh, Chris has managed to break through and destroyed one of the broadsides. Okay. Uh, Shuriken Cannon now. This is the fire prism that has remained stationary. So threes for hits. One hit. So wait, two, so point. Yeah, it's fine. So that's come through against these five warriors here. We'll get a save for four plus. No, so we've lost one of them. 2d3, focus beam shots. Focus beam, okay. Again, going after the broadsides. Three, five, one, two, three. Five shots. Chris will need threes now. He hasn't moved the fire prism yet. Wow, almost all of them. So four hits. What toughness are they? Uh, tough is five. Yeah, I need threes. Okay. Yeah, three get through. Yeah, so uh, it's pretty nasty. We're going to go for drones here. So two plus, one of them gets through. Uh, so that's going to be your D3 damage. One. Just the one wound. Okay, one wound gets through. And one of these. And then the drones, mortal wounds taken, five pluses to keep them alive. No, so two drones lost here from this squad. Drones being brought down here, tower being stripped down. Look at this, not much left here. This Eldar attack has been pretty successful. And that is the end of shooting phase here. It's been a six, I think the attack here for the Eldar has been pretty successful. Tower been decimated in this area and uh, damage even being caused on uh, our backfield units as well. But there's a big chunk of tower over here on this flank, so the game's definitely still on. Uh, but Eldar, I think, yeah, pushing ahead with an advantage here because of their success down on this side. And it's a secret objectives here. Chris may well have a number of cards to hand in at the end of the turn. We'll see if he wants to make any charges and assaults here and resolve some Overwatch as well. All right, so charges have taken place. Uh, multiple charges here all across the board. Uh, the Dire Avengers have made it in against the Fire Warriors. They took two casualties, though, as they went in. Uh, and supporting fire came in from Long Strike. Uh, this unit's snaking around into the bushes there, and Long Strike does have, for the greater good, ability. Um, but it caused any casualties, actually. It was damage coming through from the regular Fire Warrior Overwatch. Needing fives to hit here for the Tower Sept uh, here for the tower so across here uh, charges going in this squad of uh, fire dragons make it in against the fire warriors against the fire warriors here as well uh, contact's been made chris rolled 12 so he's come through consolidation moves been done here just before we fight and he has uh, reached the fireblade as well although he'll not get to fight against that character and then the other unit of fire dragons is gone they charged <laughs> into the broadsides and got hit by a ton of plasma uh, and heavy rail rifle firepower, uh, destroying them entirely. So uh, a bit of a suicide mission from them. That is uh, charges and overwatch done. We'll go on to combat resolution next. Here's the Eldar trying to uh, mop up these tower units. Uh, Chris has played Supreme Disdain down here to try and cause more trouble against the Fire Warriors. He actually charged in first with the Wave Serpent. That's made contact with the Fire Warriors as well. We'll get these combats resolved next. All right, so combats resolved here. Uh, two casualties taken on the Dire Avengers. That was damage coming through from the Fireblade. With his attacks being freeze to hit. Uh, no damage here. There's hardly been hardly any damage other than that around uh, this area. Did you cause any casualties? Yeah, one. Yep. Yeah, one uh, fire warrior killed here. There's two of them left in that squad. Then down here, uh, we lost a fire warrior. And Chris lost a Dire Avenger. That two comes off. That's a three total. Yeah. And then down here, uh, Chris hacked down three of the breaches. And there's two of them left, and they caused no trouble there against the Wraith Guard. So that is combats resolved here. Tau units been tied up. Infantry in trouble, being overrun by the uh, Eldar infantry here. And then, despite the strength of the Tau on this flank, that one unit of Wraith Guard is tied up most of the heavy firepower of the Tau, whilst Chris has taken advantage of that and attacked down on this flank. So it's going well here, for sure. But can Tau support swing around in time and cause trouble now? We're going to go on to their second turn as they prepare to respond to this Eldar aggression. Okay, so morale's been resolved here. This unit of Fire Warriors is gone. They've melted away. Uh, the drones passed morale. We just did a regular roll for them, rolled a two. So they've passed, auto-pass here. Uh, 
Dive Ranger's passed here, Tau Fire Aurors have passed as well, and then the Breacher's failed by one, so just the leader is left alive, just the lone Breacher left there, but the combat continues there against those Wraith Guard. So, uh, points scored this turn, just the one point picked up, and that was for... Scarless guys, the drones. The drones being destroyed, yes, the unit with the fly keyword has been destroyed. Chris has picked up a point. I was expecting a flood of points to be scored here, with so many cards being available, both of us here saying that we've struggled with the deck that we have drawn. But we'll go on to the second turn now for the tower. Again, they're not out of this game. We think the tower do have the advantage. They're definitely making progress here on this flank, uh, looking set to destroy tower resistance in this area. But the tower do have plenty of resources locked up on this side. Do they ignore the Wraith Guard and try and counter over here? Or do they, well, we'll just have to see what they... <laughs> we'll see what the options are, but uh, the tower gun line has been breached for sure. We'll see how well the heavy firepower can deal with this Eldar onslaught. Tower turn two, coming up next. Alright, so movement done for the tower here. We're trying to contain this Eldar assault in this flank. So the fire warriors have fallen back. Uh, the fire blade with his wounds have fallen back behind them, along with the ethereal just here. Uh, we've granted... Uh, Storm of Fire, so reroll ones for units to remain stationary, so it'll be for these. Uh, they've remained stationary, they are, the drones next to them, and then the uh, marker light support there remaining, uh, remaining stationary as well. Uh, we've remained in combat here against these Dire Avengers, just to keep them preoccupied. And then the Ghost Kill swung around, making a flanking attack. He's been joined by drones that have uh, deep struck down, or meant to strike, uh, landing just there to provide him a bit of protection as well. And then we pulled out of combat there with the lone breacher. And then uh, the two hammerheads here, hammerhead number three, which has been repaired. It's on eight wounds now. And then hammerhead number two, uh, which remains stationary. And then long strike moving a bit further ahead, just behind the breaches that are holding position uh, just in front of him. So that is it. The commander's moved as well. Eight, eight inches moved across here to lend some fire support against the wraith blades as well. So... Uh, we'll go on to shooting phase next for the tower. They have to bounce back here. They need to recover uh, as best as they can to keep themselves in this fight. We'll go on to shooting phase next for the tower empire. So we're on shooting phase here. Marker lights, four of them put onto the fire prism here. One hit after command reroll uh, from uh, this marksman here. And then we play the stratagem. Uh, marker light uplink. We roll D3. Squad of three. So four marker lights in total. Then across here, one missed. And the other one hit, putting a marker light hit there on the wraith blades so targets uh, prioritized here by the tower we're going to shooting now for them uh we're going to start with these lightning reflexes, lightning reflexes. okay lightning reflexes has been played on these uh chris recovered one of the command points with his powerful command so plasma then eight shots needing fives to hit these now with a minus one so there's some hits we'll reroll these two the ethereal no extra hits coming through. Twos for wounds, strength six. Ah, oh, shock, horror, <laughs> just the one. One save of six plus to stay alive here. Uh, it's minus three. And he rolls a six as well, <laughs> well done. So I was expected to cause some trouble for them, but they have remained alive. That is pretty important. That's a nasty unit there with its firepower. All right, uh, we'll see if we fare better. Uh, with the heavy air rifles, uh, we're going to detach the two mark the two uh, missiles as well uh, right, so into that one. Uh, minus one for latok, yes. So, uh, be four shots in total coming in from the two heavy air rifles. It would have been threes hitting uh, skimmer, but it's minus one for latok, so fours. We can reroll this one. That is a hit. So, those are the hits there. Threes to wound. Oh, again, plagued by a bad roll. Uh, that's a mortal wound straight away. Uh, it's minus four as well, so it's a straight D6 damage. Which is another six, so seven wounds here. Chris does have the spirit stones. No, it's fortune. Ah, fortune. Five pluses then. Seven in total, yes. Yes, seven. One, two. Okay, so five wounds taken there. Fortune helping out to some degree. All right, so seven wounds left here on the fire prism. Uh, we've got two seeker missiles. There is a hit. There is a wound on a five. It's minus two, so Chris will get a save here of five plus to try and block this one. No, nope, and it's d6 damage. We'll not destroy it, but we could cause some trouble. It is a six. Oh, 
<laughs> just when you needed a six. Six is coming through. Yes, blocks one. Okay, but five more wounds cause it's down to two. So fire prism in serious trouble. So we've got hammerhead number three next, uh, just over there. So he's been repaired so he can fire at normal ballistic skill. Uh, the main gun is going to go into uh, here, uh, the rail gun, and then smart missile systems into the uh, guardians. All right, so we fired the smart missile system. This is from Hammerhead number three. Two casualties there on the Guardians. Chris has played Celestial Shields. They are now boasting a four plus invon save. So the rail gun shot coming across here. It's a three to hit. Would have been a two, but a uh, Latok protecting this wave serpent. Oh, and it has helped. <laughs> That's very good. All right, so we'll go on to the next shot. We'll play uh, Hammerhead number two. Two, I think next. Okay, so uh, we've resolved the rest of the shooting here, uh, trying to reduce these uh, wraith guard down, and also trying to take out this tank. But you can see we've failed here. Uh, log strike missed. He was on the last fire. Hammerhead number three fired his main, or hammerhead number two fired his main gun down here and missed as well. Smart missile systems from all of the hammerheads in total, uh, reducing a few of the guardians down, but still that unit looking pretty healthy. Uh, the ghost kill closest model is actually the. Uh, Warlock just there, we fired the Psychic Guy and Raker, uh, overcharging, took a mortal wound and caused no damage. And then Fusion Blasters, Chris made an invon save there, one of the hits and wounds coming through. Uh, the Commander fired and helped to bring down one of the Wraith Guard. There's two of them left there on their full wounds, so still some potential available with them. And that is the end of Tower Firepower. It's not been too bad, causing trouble here for the Eldar. Uh, we've seen the damage coming through there. Two wounds left here on the fire prison. That's in a sorry state. Two wounds here on this tank as well. So the vehicles really have been picked on here by the tower heavy guns. But still struggling against the Eldar infantry. And Chris, I reckon, is still ahead here in this fight. We'll go on to assaults next. See if the tower have any charges to make. All right, so one charge has taken place. The four breaches that were here have charged in. I'm going to try and tie up those Wraith Guard or Wraith Blades again, trying to bog them down, stop uh, Chris from using them to their full potential. Ongoing melee just down here. Uh, we'll get these combats resolved. Okay, so uh, combat's resolved just here. The Fire Warriors caused a casualty and took none in return. And then down here, three breaches hacked down. We've since done morale. They've passed and they caused no damage. So the melee continues there. Again, a lone breacher. Uh, leader there uh, on his own against the Wraith Blades. That is the end of the turn. There's no cards for us to trade in here. Both sides struggling to pick up points. I think we've both drawn a bad set of cards here and we're stuck trying to <laughs> fulfill these. Uh, but there is the option to pay a command point to discard three of them, but still you've got to get rid of all of the cards in order to draw a fresh deck of five. We'll go on to the third turn now for the Eldar. Uh, they've taken advantage of going first. They've taken the fight to the tower and caused trouble for them. Tower infantry has been utterly decimated here in this game. But the tower heavy gear does remain alive. The hammerhead still defiant at this end of the board. Uh, but Eldar tactically in good shape. They're nicely spread across the table. Still plenty of resources available from them. But their tanks are shot to bits. And their heavy firepower is starting to be cut down here. We'll go on to the third turn now for the Eldar. Uh, Chris needs to stay ahead here. If he loosens his grip on this game, the tower could take advantage. We'll go on to the third turn next for the Eldar. Alright, so in the middle of movement here on turn three, both sides at deadlock here. Uh, it's <laughs> both struggling to to breathe here on this table uh, as armies being locked down here in combat and sort of a fair exchange taking place of firepower as well but Chris has just declared uh, from the end of tower turn two that he has completed an objective and that was to hold objective number five for two turns mm -hmm. uh, which he has completed there and has scored two points that puts the Eldar ahead here so all of a sudden uh, the Eldar ahead a couple of points being scored doesn't sound very much, but both armies struggling to score any points here. So two points is a very welcome uh, score here to be added to the Eldar tally. So now, with that mission completed, the Guardians, uh, Warlock and Altark start to move off towards the Ghost Kill. Next, here, uh, as Chris presses ahead, we'll see what else he decides to do. Wraith Guard bogged down in combat, either they'll continue fighting or Chris will pull them out. And then the fight continues down here as Chris tries to finish off Tower Resistance down in this sector. Right, so movement done here for the Eldar. Conga line again here with the uh, Guardians moving across. Farseer moving up with them. Uh, fire Prisms remain stationary just to get the best possible firepower from that. So too has uh, the Wave Serpent. 
uh, Die Avengers moving across nice and close here to the tower and then again moving in close here with the fire dragons and also the spirits here also closing in the range the tower uh, the elder will not leave them alone here and on this flank melee continues here the uh, die avengers happy to fight on the wraith guard happy to fight on as well uh, guardians warlock and also the Ultuck moving out and then almost forgot about them the die avengers uh, in the webway have arrived just here to provide extra fire support there against the ghost kill that is movement done we're going to psychic phase next for the eldar on turn three all right so psychic phase finished it's been a good one here from the eldar uh, fortune cast from the far seer onto here uh, so five plus ignoring wounds that come through over here jinx cast on the ghost kill minus one to his armor saves then smite and executioner coming through uh, Destroyed the fire warriors, <laughs> so they're gone. And then smite as well. We absorbed the damage. Two mortal wounds coming through from the spirit seer as well uh, into uh, the broadsides. Yeah, Chris playing an extra power using the unparalleled mastery stratagem uh, being used there by the fire seer to let off three powers in one turn. So an excellent round really for psychic powers. That's uh, very very good indeed. We'll go on to shooting phase next for the Eldar on turn three. All right, so shooting phase complete here for the Eldar. You can see the tower reduced down here quite drastically. Characters now exposed to firepower coming through. So there's firepower coming from the snipers, uh, Dire Avengers as well, and then uh, Chris used the fire dragons to go after the XV-88s. One of them's gone. Drones were all, all used up trying to protect them. One of them left with two wounds uh, from that squad. Fireblade's got one wound left. The Ethereal's got one wound left as well, so a real des desperate situation now uh, as the tower being mopped up by the Elder in this section, sector. And then across here, Ghost Kills taking one wound in total, firepower coming through from uh, the uh, Guardians, Dire Avengers firing across, in total kill one uh, drone, uh, shield drone just there, we pass to save, and then a couple of uh, five plus ignoring the damage coming through rolls as well. One of the stealth drones destroyed also, but still... Uh, the ghost kill and the drone is still quite strong on that flank. Then down here, uh, just continuing on with the melee uh, with the Wraith Blades. That is shooting phase complete. Uh, a Bright Lance hit came through, uh, and that was one of the drones blocked that, and then rolled a 5 plus to recover. And then after all of that, the other firepower came through, and you can see the results just there of all the firepower that's taken place. But... Uh, Eldar still pressing ahead, definitely still the advantage of them on this flank. Uh, tower resistance almost entirely gone from this area, but Tau still strong over here. Uh, Chris ahead on points, so Eldar doing well. We'll go on to Assaults and Overwatch next. Alright, so Assaults have gone ahead here, Dire Avengers charging in, and they've made it in against all the characters. Then down here, good turn up for the Tau, the broadside being charged. Uh, Exarch was killed here, he had, took the wound and so he was removed, that was damage from plasma rifle fire, and they, they failed, they're all a three, including the ghost inch wasn't enough to make it in, and the spirit seer then charged uh, and died, <laughs> took a, took, uh, failed two plasma rifle saves and then also a heavy rear rifle save as well, uh, caused him three wounds, so he's gone. Then uh, melee continues here and here and then across on the other side the ghost kill has been charged. Banshee Mask on the Altark there, no overwatch allowed, and then the other units uh, poured in, and Dire Avengers have charged into the drones, so loads of combats here uh, for the Eldar as they take the fight to the tower. Resolve these combats next. Right, so uh, combat's resolved, a wound taken here on the Marksman, and uh, we passed a save here of uh, a six there with the Ethereal, and that's it, we didn't do any damage in return. Uh, then across here, Ghost Kill has suffered, uh, that was damage, one wound caused by Guardians, uh, two wounds being caused by the Warlock, and then uh, two wounds, three wounds being caused by uh, the Altark there of his D3 damage blade. Uh, a drone was used, Savior Protocols, to absorb another wound that came through. It would have been another D3, so the Ghost Kill just about remains alive. He struck back and caused no... Oh, no, he caused... Uh, killed one of the Guardians, yeah. yeah. Uh, Dire Avengers, uh, the two drones that were left have since done out, and they have melted away, so... Uh, the Guardians or the uh, Dire Avengers have been freed up. And then down here, uh, Chris destroyed the Lone Breacher and consolidated into the other. 
Uh, and then the combat down here was a standoff uh, just there between those two units. That's the end of the turn. So Chris can now trade in any cards. It's not, <laughs> it's not many points being picked up here. Oh, <laughs> We've struggled here. Bad deck no. for both of us. None. None. All right, so not many points being scored here. and we, we can't draw any cards until we discard what we have. All right, so we'll go now. On to the third turn for the Tau. They are, they are losing the war here, and they are running out of resources for sure. The infantry have been decimated. They're losing their grip, or virtually lost their grip on this part of the table. Uh, they do have the hammerheads, but tactically the Tau are out of shape. But they'll press on. We'll go on to the third turn now for the Tau Empire. Okay, so movement here on turn three for the tower. We've backed out of combat with the Ethereal and the Fireblade. We've stayed in with the Marksman just to tie up the Dire Avengers. Fight continues down here between the Fire Warriors and the Dire Avengers just there. Breach has broken off combat and has left the Wraith Blades. And then the Hammerheads, the three of them, have shifted left down this side, getting ready to uh, fire their weapons in support of the tower cores and then across here the commanders shifted across and then the ghost kill we've played stimulant inject with him using our last command point he's jumped up and over 12 inches and he'll be out of fire at his normal bracket there despite the damage that he has that is movement done for the tower here uh, we will now go on to their shooting phase now. All right, so firepower complete for the tower. It's been a disastrous turn for them. We had a plan, uh, but failed here. We're trying to strip away the Guardians uh, from the Warlord, but failed. We fired submunition, smart missile systems, uh, the shots pouring in, ghost kill as well. Uh, but we got no mark light hits. These two here missed. No command rerolls to help them out, and so no, with no mark light assistance, a lot of ones are rolled and unable to reroll them. Commander in the end uh, fired across here. He was going to go after the wall, but he fired across here and took out one of the Wraith Blades. So there'll be morale. Oh, no, there won't be morale for the Guardians. You have that ability that ignores the morale. Yeah, it's a good combination there. So the Guardians doing their job of protecting the Warlord. And then across here, no damage to the tanks. Our firepower's diverted away. Uh, across there trying to take out the guardians but then uh, down here uh, two fire dragons brought down that's firepower coming from the broadside that is shooting phase done the tower will not be able to win at this rate if their firepower doesn't improve and time's ticking away they're running out of resources here shooting's finished we'll go on to charges next and overwatch possibly for the tower we'll see all right, so charges have taken place. The ghost kill tried to charge but failed. The commander made it in and has taken a wound. And then uh, the hammerhead tried to charge the Dire Avengers but failed. And then this hammerhead here has charged in against the Wraith Blade. So we'll resolve combats now here at the end of the tower turn. Yeah. yeah, so not much of an exchange going on here. Uh, the commander, well, no damage here at all. In this combat, no damage here with the hammerhead and the wraith blade. One fire warrior brought down. And I've since done morale, it's auto pass there for the morale, uh, for the tower, uh, just with the one casualty. And then down here, no damage caused either uh, for uh, the Dire Avengers fighting against the fire site marksman. That's the end of the turn. Uh, we have no cards to trade in. We're struggling here to fulfill objectives. We'll go now on to the fourth turn now for the Eldar. They're still ahead. Tower with so much heavy gear available, but struggling to make their mark here in this battle. Uh, the Eldar infantry doing very, very well indeed. We'll go on to the fourth turn now for the Eldar. All right, so movement phase complete here, pretty swift from the Eldar. Guardians on the move now, and finally coming out from the corner, uh, the Fire Prism has uh, made a move here just onto this corner to face off against three of the Hammerheads arrayed here on this side. Uh, fast here on the move here as well. Uh, nice close range here with the two Fire Dragons. Uh, continuing on in combat here with the Dire Avengers, and here as well with these Dire Avengers. And then across here, Dire Avengers closing in here on the Commander. And then Chris electing to remain in combat there with the Wraith Blade. That's movement time. We're going to Psychic Phase next. All right, so Psychic Phase done. Smite and Executioner cast here. Uh, the Firesight Marksman has been destroyed. And then uh, it was Jinx attempted here but failed with that. So that's Psychic Phase done. Uh, shooting Phase coming up next. 
All right, so shooting phase here. Uh, snipers, excellent from them. Uh, Chris split his shots coming through and picked off the last wound on the ethereal and also the last wound on the fireblade. They have been destroyed. Uh, two wounds. Uh, Two more, one wound left here on him. That's firepower coming in for the fire dragons. One wound remaining. Chris fired these, this, Bright Lance, and the Shrieken Cannon here, and failed to pick off the final wound on the XV88. Uh, the fire prism did no damage, the main prism gun there against the damaged hammerhead. Uh, and then down here, no damage against the commander. That's pistol fire coming from the Autark. And then Shrieken. Catapult, Avenger Shrieking Catapults finished off the Ghost Kill with some good firepower from them. And again, uh, Eldar Infantry, uh, superior here in this game and uh, helping Chris on to dominate the battlefield. Almost. Hammerhead resistance still is strong. We'll go now on to combat resolution next and any fresh charges. Yeah, so charge has taken place. Uh, we killed the Exarch there, firepower coming from uh, the broadside, uh, and then the rest of them made into combat. So two have the uh, fire dragons, and then the ongoing combats here, and then across here the Dire Avengers make it in against the commander. We'll get these combats resolved next. All right, so uh, combat's resolved here. The broadside's gone. He's been destroyed. Now uh, we've lost fire warriors down here is just the lone fire warrior left commander's been destroyed as well as the relic that chris took for the power sword the d3 damage two of them got through four wounds was enough to bring the commander down devastating uh, result there the tower bewildered with their commander being overwhelmed by the eldar infantry so just three hammerheads left really not much else left of anything Pretty here sure two well yeah okay two spotters and a preacher <laughs> But not, left, not much left here. The main battle tanks, it seems to be the, the uh, hammerheads do last towards the end of the game. But just those main battle tanks, is, I don't think that's going to be enough for the tower to stand much of a chance here. Okay, so turn's finished. Uh, there is morale to do here. We'll see if uh, he survived. Yes, he'll be okay. So morale's fine for him. And that marks the end of the turn. Does Chris have any cards? Yes, he does. Okay. Objective number two. Oh, well done. Another point picked up just here any others no no okay that's it right so that is the end of turn four here for the eldar uh, they are quite well ahead now with points being picked up all right so turn's finished we'll go on to tower turn four here we do have the hammerheads left they're quite a resource for the tower to have we'll see what we can do with them All right, so movement done with the tower. Uh, the lone breacher ran six inches. He's gone on to objective number five. And then uh, the hammerheads uh, forming a column to <laughs> manoeuvring off in that direction. That's the movement done. We've remained stationary of these. We'll go on to shooting phase next for the tower on turn four. All right, so uh, shooting complete for the tower. Hammerheads uh, pretty good from them. Uh, Rao gunshots coming down and have destroyed both of these uh, vehicles, so they have been destroyed. Tactically, though, not sure if it's going to help out uh, the tower too much. Uh, and then smart missile systems have removed the guardians from play and brought down a few of the dire avengers. That's the shooting done. We still have combat to do. Yes, so we'll resolve these combats soon. That'll be the end of the turn. Right, so combat's resolved, tier the lone fire warriors destroyed, and Chris has then uh, moved up. The models are just here, they're in contact there against the marksman. That is combat's resolved, morale's been resolved as well, so that is the end of the turn. We'll go on to the fifth, possibly final turn now, for the Eldar. Alright, so movement complete here uh, on turn five guardians moving back onto objective number three fast here moving up and across these holding position and continuing the fight just here and then a slight tweak made with the altar getting ready to potentially charge into combat that is movement done we'll go on to psychic phase next for the elder on turn five all right psychic phase complete here marksman gone that was smite and executioner being used uh to bring him down and then across here, Jinx cast on the lead. Uh, hammerhead number three has dropped down to four up save. So that's psychic phase done. Shooting phase next. All right, so uh, shooting phase complete here. Uh, hammerhead number three, the lead tank has taken a fair bit of damage down to four, four wounds left. Uh, that was plasma grenades being thrown, shuriken weapons as well, causing trouble. And then the marksman at the very top here, has been taken out that was dire avenger firepower bringing him down so uh, eldar mopping up tower resistance now across the board all that's left 
is now the three hammerheads and a lone breacher. We'll go into combats now. I think Chris may well want to charge. We'll see what he decides to do over there to continue the harassment here of the hammerheads. We'll go on to charges and overwatch next. All right, so uh, charge has taken place. Uh, the two lead tanks now, long strike and hammerhead number three, have been contacted. Hammerhead number two uh, has not been contacted there uh, for charges. Okay, so we'll resolve combats here. The Eldar harassing the main battle tanks of the town. All right, so combats resolved there. Uh, a wound put on long strike and a wound put on hammerhead number three. So he's down to three wounds left. Hammerhead down, uh, long strike down to twelve. And then we killed one of the Dire Avengers in return. That's combat's resolved. End of turn five here for the Eldar. They're pretty well spread across the table here. They have taken heavy damage, but uh, they're, tactically they're in good shape. Any cards to trade in? This, oh, this could one, kill off the tower here. Three. <gasps> two, three. Oh, two. two points. Well done. Two more points picked up. That's going to put the Eldar miles ahead here. Okay. And Chris almost through. Uh, his objectives he has one left all right so that's the end of the turn here and i think the end of the game the tower just we know what objectives we had and i don't think we're going to be able to fulfill them here all right so uh, that's the end of the turn uh, we'll go on to the fifth turn now for the tower Right, moving down for the tower. Breacher has moved across in this direction, and the hammerheads continue their move as well. Just three inches crawled along there by hammerhead number three, and the other two have gone twelve. Just to there, so we'll resolve some shooting now for the tower. All right, so uh, shooting phase finished here for the tower. Breacher fired across here at the far seam, caused a wound. Down here, the Dire Avengers have been destroyed. That was uh, smart missile systems from the tanks and submunition being fired as well. But the Warlock still remains alive, and we couldn't get through to the Army Commander as well. So that's shooting done. Combat's none here for the tower. We're not going to charge anywhere, so that marks the end here of their fifth turn. So, uh, end of the turn, we'll let Chris roll to see if the game continues. He's one. rolled, and he has rolled a one. All right, so the game will finish. I think the tower can breathe a sigh of relief here <laughs> that it's over. Hammerheads, though, survivability on them things, they have survived. We'll calculate points now to see uh, the final score. I think the Eldar are very far ahead here. Right, so we're calculating points here. Now we can reveal all that was going on secretly <laughs> for both of us here. Okay, so Chris has scored... Object, defend objective number six, uh, two points. Supremacy, that's the multiple objectives. Mission critical, that's objective number five. Uh, Secure objective number two. Defend objective number five, again. And then scour the skies unit that could fly. That was the drones that were slain. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, slay the warlord. Yes, the commander died. So that's ten. Line breaker, eleven points scored just there. That's a respectable score. For the Tau, we have no cards to show you because we <laughs> didn't fulfill any of them. We did pick up Line Breaker and also uh, First Blood. So 11-2 the final score. We, What we were trying to do, now it can be revealed what was going on, behind enemy lines I was trying to play at least three units to get behind enemy lines with these. That would have picked up D3 victory points. And then King Slayer as well, D3 victory points plus slay the wall, a potential of seven points the tower could have picked up. We ran out of time and resources to fulfill it. That's why, why we were desperately trying to strip away the Guardian and Dire Avenger def, uh, protection there from the Autark. But it was uh, an attempt that failed in the end for the tower. They just, their infantry were hammered here in this game, virtually wiped out, and uh, the Eldar assault by their infantry was particularly effective. So... Uh, that marks the end of the game. 11-2, the final score. Respectable here for the Tower. Chris has achieved uh, a fine victory here against the might of the Tower Empire. But keep a look out for the Tower. They'll be fighting in other battles, and we hope to see Chris return again with his Eldar in the future. But there it is. It's been a great game. Very enjoyable one here. Real... Uh, Real deadlock between these two forces, but uh, it was the Eldar assault in the end with their infantry uh, that led them to victory. Great battle, thanks for watching, and tune in next time.
Yeah. That with the drone support made them very tough. Okay. Right, we're just discussing units of the game here. Uh, for the Eldar, uh, Chris has gone for Dire Avengers. Uh, it's a pretty solid infantry choice here. They didn't mind getting stuck in combat against the tower. Their firepower is good. Good firepower support. You can see uh, Dire Avenger units here in the tower deployment zone. So Chris has given it to them. For the tower, uh, Hammerheads did well, but we've discussed it here. And we're going to give it to the broadsides. This unit here was particularly hard to remove. It took a lot of firepower from the Eldar in the end to eventually shift them. A lot of effort was put into removing those from play and their firepower was pretty good as well. Even on Overwatch they were quite effective. So that's units of the game for both sides. So